Hello, subscribers, fellow YouTubers. Z at Eldred here. Today, I wanted to just focus on uh, following up on the video that I made about periodization, talking about the different training cycles that you do at different times of the year on an annual plan. Within that periodization, there are things called macro cycles and micro cycles. The macro cycle is a period of time, macro, M-A-C-R-O. It's a period of time, say, anywhere between four to seven weeks that you decide to train for a goal and after that period, you have a rest week. What I usually subscribe to my clients is we do six week blocks. So you have, say, from January 1st to mid-February, you have a specific kind of training program for that cycle. Because if you try to do a plan for the whole year without breaking it up into smaller blocks, it becomes a bit hectic and a bigger job for your mind and your body to endure. So macro cycles are used so that you go in shorter blocks, then you rest and you start out at a higher level each time. Because if you never rested, you would never allow, your body would never recuperate and absorb the training. And that's how you improve. So the macro cycle of six weeks is based on looking at your goals for the year so that, for example, if you have a sportive coming up in, say, the first week of March, then what you would do is you would start from that date of your sportive, and that would be like week six. The, the date of your sportive would be week six, because that's when after your peak, and you back up six weeks from, uh, five weeks from there. So your sportive will be week six, and you back up five weeks, and that's your training block. That's your macro cycle. And that's how you do it throughout the year. So after your sportive, then the week after you back off, you rest, you visit your family, you get to see the people you couldn't see when you were training a lot in that six week block. So throughout the year, you have these rest periods interspersed there to give you the chance to mentally and physically absorb that training and come back with a higher morale and rest it. What do you do in these rest periods? It's similar to what I discussed about uh, taking a rest week in October, you know, when the fall started. These rest periods don't mean that you don't ride or you don't do anything, but basically you cut your duration in half during the rest period. And at a minimum, you ride every other day. You want to stay, you know, in tune and, and keep the muscle memory. You don't want to just stop riding completely. You know, um, you go out and you ride every other day easy you know if, if you get to a few climbs you know zone two zone three you're not trying to hammer or do whatever you're basically going to just maintain the fitness from that six week period so you're going to ride steady rides if you do a group ride that week you sit in if you want to but if you don't want to do a group ride you you don't have to you could ride three or four days the whole week so if you used to ride five or six days you could ride three days if you want to do more that's fine the goal is to give your body a chance to recuperate, recuperate by doing less volume at a lower intensity that week, your body will get a chance to repair everything and absorb the training from the six week, the, the prior six weeks and take you to the next level. That's a macro cycle. A micro cycle is the weekly, weekly cycle within the macro cycle, meaning what do you do every day? And that's the one I talked about later, I'm gonna do the different workouts, do videos for each one. So basically, in your micro cycle now, within the macro six week cycle, you would basically be training based on your time. Let's say you have five days to ride. Monday would be a day where usually after the weekend, you would be taking it easy. If you can ride, you ride, but you're not really training. You're just going out to kind of stay loose, easy. No strain, no pain. Just spin the little gears, enjoy the scenery, whatever. Tuesday, that's the day after your rest day, you want to see how you feel from the weekend and after your rest day. So you can kind of get in tune to how you're recuperating. You know, are you getting enough sleep? You know, what's been going on in your life that may be causing you to not feel great on Tuesday? You gotta be evaluating all that. So on Tuesday you go out and you test your body. That's your day for sprints. You know, you put it in like a, a 53 
17 or 5316, you know, on a flat road and get it up and spin the gear out, whatever. You know, I'm not gonna go into a specific workout, I'll do different videos for that. But Tuesdays, you did, so if after the first sprint or so you're not feeling too good, you haven't rested enough, drop it, just spin home, you know, or finish the ride easy. On the next day, you might feel better. But you've gotta start evaluating why am I not recovered yet almost 48 hours after my last ride on Sunday. I mean, that's the gate. Usually within 44, 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, you should be feeling good again. If you're not feeling good again, either you did too much, you rode over your head, you didn't get enough rest, you didn't eat right after the ride, you know, I'll do different videos on how to recuperate and how, how you can make sure you get good recuperation after your workouts. So you gotta look at all those details and try to understand why you're not feeling great 48 hours later. Because these are the things that help you prepare for your big events. When you learn how long it takes you to recover from Sunday to Tuesday, that's the same cycle you would use from Thursday to Saturday if you're racing Saturday, or from Friday to Sunday if you're racing Sunday. And that's that's what, what this is about. The micro cycle teaches you about yourself. So Tuesday's workout is short. Then Wednesday, you will do something less intense than Tuesday, maybe your threshold work. A slightly longer. Tuesday workout is like 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Wednesday's workout, if you, if you have the time, it can be two hours, you know, two and a half, three hours if you have time. If you don't, 90 minutes are good. You'll be okay because really it's a, 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 a more intense ride than an endurance ride, but less than, you know, full gas. So we, I call it threshold, almost like time trial pace. And then Thursday's ride is an endurance ride. And endurance ride means you probably won't be doing the distance that you do with the group, but you want to focus on the duration, the time, because your speeds are slower when you ride solo. So you want to go out for a minimum 90 minutes if you, if you don't, if you press for time. And, or if you have the time, you can do two and a half to three hours on Thursday. Friday's ride is a rest ride. It's just like Monday because Friday is the day where if you're racing on Sunday, you want to really ought to take the day off completely. It's good to take at least one day off, two's better, but one day off during that, the whole micro cycle of a week to teach your body how to respond to a day off the bike. Because sometimes you're traveling, you can't ride. So you got to get used to that. So Friday is the day where you, know, you don't have to ride. I use Friday to clean my bike, check it, make sure it's ready for the weekend, you know, run errands, get all that crap out of the way. I hate running errands on the weekends because all the stores are crowded. So if I have Friday, I use the afternoon or whatever, whatever time I have to run my errands. So if I can't ride, I don't worry about it. If I do have the time, I spend 30 minutes to an hour tops spinning baby gears just to remind my body we're going to be doing this on the weekend. Just easy. I don't even wear heart rate monitor. You just spin. You're not training. You're just staying loose. You know, especially if Saturday and Sunday are gonna be hard. You wanna go into Saturday and Sunday with fresh legs. Because from Thursday's ride being an endurance, you somewhat started resting on Thursday. And then Friday just finished it off. Because Thursday's ride was steady and just building your capillaries and all of that. So you didn't hammer, you shouldn't have hammered yourself. You know, don't go out on Thursday and do six hours if you've been doing only two before. You always wanna increase your duration in small jumps maybe 15 to 30 minutes at a time. Because cycling is a sport that you get too excited, you can overdo things. You know, it's not like running, where you know, you, you feel it in your legs or whatever. Cycling can spoil you and you can just say, oh, I can do more. And you end up doing too much and then you're tired the next day. So keep that in mind. Now Saturday, if you're racing Saturday, you go to the race, you do what you can. You take the whole week, the sprints, the, the threshold work, the endurance, all of that you put it together because racing is the best training. Or you do a group ride if you're not racing. Then you, or if you're not racing and you don't want to ride with a group, just do an endurance ride. Because whenever possible, a little extra endurance will not hurt you. You know, especially if your events are longer than, say, two and a half hours or two hours. You need the endurance. If you're doing 30 minute crits, a real racer's endurance is baggage. You need to work on speed. So that's, that's a different, a whole different kind of training for that. So you got to build the engine for the event that you're in. And then, so, Saturday, you do whatever, you know, if you're doing a group ride, you get in there, you mix it up. If you're feeling good, you go hard, you know, go off the front, do what you got to do because that's where you're trying to put everything from the week together. Then Sunday, if you're not racing, do an endurance ride. 
Or if Sunday, if you rode hard or you raced on Saturday and Sunday you were tired, you can take a break. You know, you have to decide what's important. You don't have to race Saturday and Sunday. You, if, if the race is on Saturday, then you do the race on Saturday. If the race is on Sunday, you do the race on Sunday. But sometimes you, you, there are events where you're doing Saturday and Sunday. And so if you're training for an event, like a lot of guys here, and I've done a few of the MS-150 rides here to Austin, that is Saturday and Sunday. If you're gonna prepare for something like that, then your training needs to be Saturday and Sunday. You gotta, ride, you gotta race or do group rides on those days. So you get your body ready six weeks out for that event, you know. But just know that you have to decide what you need to do for that event because if you're tired after Saturday, then either ride easy or take the day off. Spend it with your family, whatever. Just sleep in, it doesn't matter. Because you gotta build up to everything you wanna do. If it's new, if, you're, if you did more on Saturday, it's better to let your body absorb Saturday's training and go out on Sunday and try to drive yourself into the ground. You are not going to improve if you're dead tired and you try to go and do another hard workout. The quality won't be there anyway. And you will just get, you can burn yourself out. So just listen to yourself. Go hard when you feel good. And that's why the micro cycle gets you to start resting from Thursday so that by the weekend you're fresh mentally and physically. Because even though you're doing an endurance ride on Thursday, you're not doing too many hours. The hours will wear you out, even though the intensity is low. So you keep the hours down and you ease into the weekend. But regardless, every ride, training or competition, listen to your body. You know, uh, that I've prepared for rides out and you know races and I trained like crazy and went to the race and just had dead legs in the race. I mean, the race started, I had the training in me, but for some reason that day, my body was just not there. It's just basically like it shut down. And after a lap, I was just, I was working so hard when I shouldn't have been. And at the time I had a coach and he could tell, you know, and I just told him, I said, I don't have it today. And he told me just pull off, pull out. I pulled out of the pack and just basically put my bike on the car and sat in the car and couldn't really understand it. And then we went back and analyzed everything. That's why you keep a training diary. I used to Garmin now, uh, upload the Golden Cheetah software on my Mac and I analyzed the hours and everything I'm doing. I also put notes, you know, who's, who, you know, what, what are the other stresses? You know, it's my family, mostly my extended family sometimes get on my nerves. I'm trying to get on their nerves. But all that stuff factors, you know, what's going on around you, what's going on at work, all of that, I keep notes about all that. And what it, had, what it had turned out was, I, over the last two to three weeks before the race, even though I was training consistently, I wasn't getting enough rest. Um, there was a lot of issue with somebody visiting and, you know, a lot of visitors in the house keeping us up and you, know, you got to entertain and all of that. And at the time, I didn't consider that to be a big deal. But because I did not get the rest that I normally would get, uh, it played a factor. So you got to look at all of those extraneous factors and make sure that you rule out, you know, leave, you know, make sure you avoid the, the distractions and the different stresses that can cause you to not be at your best because everything affects you. You know, interpersonal relationships, all that plays a factor. Work, I mean, I basically had to give up a corporate job because it wasn't because of cycling. It was just too stressful. And, and you know, it was just affecting my function, blood pressure, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know what? The money wasn't worth it. <laughs> you know, so, so I have less money, but I'm a lot happier today. <laughs> you know, and I'm still here. As they say in the Matrix, we're still here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Zion, now for those of you who are Matrix fans. But anyway, I just wanted to go through that. Leave your comments below. I'm going to do other videos to follow this that will focus on the workouts for each day of the week. So you guys can use that as reference because it's hard to remember. It's a little, it's a little complicated. But I will put some text in this video uh, when I do the production editing to just as a reminder so you guys can visually see what I'm talking about when I talk about these cycles because it's really, it's complicated, but I'm trying to break it up in pieces and dose out the information, you know. Uh, this is what I do for my clients, but I give it to them over a period of time. I don't give them a whole annual plan until 
they've stayed with me for the year because I give it to them in blocks. I find out what they're training for. We go to that date on the calendar, we back up and prepare for that date. That's a macro cycle. If I were to give them an annual plan, it would just be too much. It's almost like getting a four year college degree program in the first year. It's just not ready. It just, the, the brain cannot absorb that. You know, so you go in and you do your college requirements and all that stuff and you ease into it. Same thing. So right now I'm talking about macro cycles and the micro cycle. The micro cycle is the week. The macro cycle is, is the four, uh, six week block. That will not change. That's the same. You carry that with you throughout the year, even in the rest season. The, the, the cycle of the micro for a week, the rhythm stays the same. And then all you do is you adjust it based on when you're competing or when you got serious rides or, or your sportifs within that week. If your sportif is on Saturday, don't go out on Thursday and be a hero on the road. You're gonna need that energy on Saturday. The human body has a finite amount of energy. What you use, you gotta pay, pay back. And sometimes we call it a tax. <laughs> you gotta pay back, you know? You go out on a ride and we see riders early. Everybody's fresh early and they're killing themselves and they're doing it. And I always wonder, okay, does he realize that 10 miles in, we're coming to a serious climb? And this, if this person is inexperienced and it hasn't been dozing it out, on that climb, they end up riding alone because we're gone. So you got to make sure you, you, you do the, the, the work when you need to do. If Tuesday calls for hard work, go easy on Monday, take the day off, whatever. So that Tuesday, you can really go hard. And then Wednesday, it's a little less than Tuesday. Then Thursday is less than Wednesday, than Tuesday and Wednesday. So you can see the pyramid comes down. So by Friday now, that's your rest day. If you must, if you feel like you want to ride, easy. No, no strain, no pain. You know, you do you could do a few accelerations to stay loose, but you shouldn't do that workout and feel tired at the end. It should rejuvenate you, a massage on the bike. And then Saturday, you go out and you let it hang out. Now, there are times when I used to tell my clients you need to rest two days before, not just Friday. Even though Thursday is a little tapered, if the race is on Saturday, we move the schedule back to where to do endurance on Wednesday, you know, and then do threshold on Tuesday, and then do sprints on Monday. So they have Thursday, Friday to rest. So Thursday off, Friday you go check yourself, test everything out, and then Saturday you go and you race. And what drives that is, how much recuperation a person needs. So when I get to really know them, we adjust that micro cycle. And I mentioned that so that if you're doing it yourself and you're trying to try this, you gotta pay attention to yourself. Find out if you need two days. Two days off doesn't mean two days not riding. Two days off means two days not hammering yourself. You can still ride. But if you need 48 hours, then two days before your event, you need a rest. You start resting. That's not a long, heavy endurance ride. You just easy spin or not at all. Go do some errands, whatever. Then the day before, you wanna go out and you wanna clean out the pipes a little bit for a few minutes because the body forgets hard efforts real quickly. You know, and you probably, you've probably been through it if you are uh, somebody who, out of, on the way to work, you're trying to get to a traffic light. You get through that light, it's green, and I'm, I'm trying to make it. Well, the first, time, first light you do that on is you feel real crappy. And then you try it again and you're like, oh, that doesn't feel too bad. That's what I mean, you cleaned out the pipes. It's part of the warm up. That's why when you're doing hard events, you gotta warm up 20 to 30 minutes. The harder the event, the shorter the event, the more intense it's gonna be, the more intense the warm up needs to be. Cause you gotta tell your body, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit zone four, zone five. The first time you do it, you'll feel crappy. But then once you recover and you do it again, you're like, oh, okay. Then the body's ready now. So don't go out on a ride and just get there late and <laughs> try to start hammering. No, if you get there late, suck wheel for a while, loosen up. Let your body ease into those zones. You will feel a lot better. The first time you go hard, it always feel crappy. If you watch the pros when they're getting ready for time trial, they put their, their uh, jerseys, their, their skin suits down and they wear something else, like another jersey, and they have fans because they're hammering. They get to that zone that they're gonna go when their time is up to go on the, on the road for the time trial. They hit that time trial having already tasted that zone. Not to where they're tired. 30 seconds, one minute in the zone, whatever, just to clean out the pipes, get the exhaust, you know, get the, get the gases out of there. That's how we kind of refer to that. So you do that first and then all of a sudden, whoa, it doesn't feel as bad. It doesn't matter how much you've been training. 
warm up is critical, cool down is critical. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. If you have any questions, put them on here. If I need to cover it, I, if it's short, I will answer you. If, I need, if it's in, intense and complicated and I feel that the entire group can benefit from it, I will make a video and put it out there. But this is basically to introduce you into the cycles of training, the blocks, training blocks, macro, micro, the weekly rhythm. So you get into that rhythm. It's a process that I need you to understand so you can adapt it based on what's going on with you. It's not something that I want you to feel like I gotta follow this verbatim. I want you to understand that it's flexible. It's a plan and you massage it as needed based on your event, okay? So I'm gonna stop here and I want you guys to be safe while you're on the road. And if you're ever in the Houston area, look me up. I, uh, I run a fit studio here and I coach and I usually go out with a lot of my clients as time permits. So if you're in Houston, look me up. I'll show you some rides. Houston is not all flat roads. Uh, we got hills. Where I live, it's always up and down. <laughs> so you can, <laughs> you can get a workout. So if you're in the area, look me up. And be safe out there. And uh, stay tuned to the channel for more content.